My name is Carsten Kümmel and I'm a live sound engineer specialized on orchestral productions. We are in Munich, we are behind the opera on a square called Marshallplatz. And here it's happening a concert of the orchestra of the opera, the Bavarian State Orchestra, which is playing tomorrow. And we will have uh, Richard Strauss' Alpen Symphony, a huge symphonic piece with about 106 musicians on stage. Of course, it's not just an orchestra. It's one of the orchestras in Germany. Everything has to be clear and uh, have to be very well organized so that you don't get any surprises. There you see is the stage and as well, of course, we have a beautiful L-ESA system, a system of uh, L-acoustics here happening. On this place, actually the first time, we used it two months ago already on the other side of the opera for a public viewing. What is my task here? First of all, bringing all the orchestra together, making it sound. So on the microphone side, there is more or less standard setup. So I don't use any clip microphones, or just overhead microphones. So my microphones is suspended from the ceiling, uh, omnidirectional ones, and uh, then bring it uh, to the audience uh, with Elisa. Before I worked with Elisa, uh, I already made the panorama on a different way. I was creating panorama by overtones because you have the normal problem of the people on the left side hearing something completely different than the people on the right side. And so that demands some way, if you want to uh, mix in stereo, to uh, make another thing. Working with Elisa totally simplifies that because you have everywhere where you are, you have a constant direction of what you are we're hearing. So you always have this wide field of, I don't call it stereo, but you have the localization system uh, constantly. With Elisa, you have a directivity of all the signals throughout the, well, it's the whole space. This makes your life so much easier. Another thing is a big advantage uh, is the near-fill system. You know, in a quick and dirty way, uh, the near-fill system is a mono, and that's definitely n absolutely not satisfying. Before I worked with Elisa, I did it on my own with some old stuff like DMEs or something to create a spectral data stereophonic system to have a localization system as well in the near-fills, which was a huge amount of work uh, to do so and absolutely not reliable to do it for single shows. So you can use that on tours, but not on, uh, on single shows. But with the Elisa processor, including the near fills, it just, it's a drag and drop in the processor and it makes it life so easy. And uh, the sound which is coming from the near fills gets so natural. It's a huge improvement to just a mono near fill system. So my name is Thomas Mirhorn. Um, nickname Meli. I'm working for Acoustics since eight years now and I'm working as an application um, engineer, uh, application support engineer. I'm helping our customers to get the best out of our systems, of course. I think an Elisa Live system is really a great system for, for classical content, let's say, not just orchestra, let's say classical content, but not just. So I think um, there's much more possible with an Elisa because at the end, it's, it's really, really easy. You can bring that to just one phrase. Uh, what you see is what you hear and not just with classical content. But of course, um, especially with a classical orchestra and uh, so many inputs, so many sources on stage, it's much more easy to, let's say, locate them and let them sound more natural. Because I think one of the biggest benefits of, of an Elisa system or immersive sound in general is not just that you, let's say, hear it from where it comes from stage, um, it's like hearing it more natural because if you have just a left that system at the end it's more mono than stereo because let's get back to, to where it all started it's a source on the center of the stage and of course you would not uh, pan that to just left or just right so you have the same source coming from two equal systems and then you have a lot of sources coming to ecosystems. And what you need to do now is now cleaning up the, the sound of the sources to uh, have something like resolution to be able to, to um, hear all the different sources more or less in their own natural habitat and their territory and their frequency range. And with uh, spreading that uh, sources, not just on two left right hang, to more sources like we have here to five, um, it gives you the possibility to not just to plan it to where it comes from, to let it sound more natural because you don't need to clean up the frequency range. And I think that is one of the biggest benefits, especially for classical content. 
if you can spread the sources, which means not just uh, localization, which means SPL as well. You don't need that big SPL from just two hangs because for here you have five hangs, which are, um, you know, giving the, the average SPL or the whole SPL. We try to spread the scene system within the stage or let's say the scene um, of this event. So you are in the field, you are in the venue and you can hear the sound where it comes from and not just somewhere from the front. So the possibility to hear that really separated is the, the big win situation here. The connection between the console and the Eliezer processor is quite simple and straightforward. Uh, I get all the signals from the stage on my separate channels in the console as it should be. And then I go directly via my direct outs post fader into the Eliezer processor via Mardi. And in the processor, I do all the deepness in sound and all the localization and the reverberation as well. It has a beautiful sounding reverb inside that processor. So it sounds so complicated, but actually it's done in just a few minutes. We have five times nine camera as the scene system, as the main system. We have eight KS21 subwoofers. Then we have a spatial front fill. Spatial front fill means that we have a dedicated rendered mix on any channel of the front fills. So we have additional 10 X8 speakers just for spatial front fills. Then we have two outfills, X8 as well, and some A10s. And what we have here is a Kiva 2 system as a delay line. So we have one delay line, which is placed at 75 meters uh, distance from stage. And uh, we have two times six Kiva 2. And the delay lines are fed by a distinct mix, a distinct left, right, down mix from the Lisa processor as well. My name is Rahul. I work with Elacoustics as an application engineer. And uh, today I'm here in the role of an Elisa mix support engineer. So Carsten's doing all the all the nice work on the desk and in Elisa. I'm just here as a, as a support, make sure everything is where it needs to be. And if he needs a quick hand on something, I jump in and, uh, and help. But Carsten hasn't needed a hand so far. So that's, uh, that's good because Elisa is really easy. So what we're going to do right now is uh, we're going to show you a view of what's happening in what we call the Elisa controller, which is a software, the gateway into how we manipulate objects uh, inside the Elisa universe. This is what we call Elisa controller. What you're seeing right now is the soundscape. Uh, we have uh, over a hundred musicians today and for the sake of this video and to help keep things clear I've turned off a lot of the sources and kept a few just to show you how it works. What we have here is a representation of our loudspeaker system and the stage. Uh, so we go left, right. We can also go forward and back in distance from the stage. So we are able to recreate a sense of distance when an, when, an, when an instrument has to come forward in the mix or go back in the mix. So that's the direction, forward and back. I've only kept these uh, 12, 13 sources on to show you how they work. We can select uh, the source that we want. We can manipulate them at the bottom here piece of information on a console what we call channels when they come into the immersive environment they become objects and these objects are represented by these colored circles with numbers on them we can also grab a whole group of objects like we have the first violins here and we can move them around on stage we have very high level of control in the way of where we can control what we can control and how we can control so this uh, really adds uh, broadens the canvas for a mix engineer and doesn't limit you just to going left or right our speakers represented here but we have the five uh, scene speakers is what we call them the main speakers uh, which are five hangs of kara here we also have front fills but these are special these are spatialized front fills so even if you are in the first row uh, listening to these front fills, you will still have the spatial information in them and it's not a mono mix down, uh, which can be quite interesting and it's quite effective as well. This is the room engine. This is how we are able to recreate or, or somewhat manipulate the room that we're mixing in. This can be quite a powerful tool. It's not an effect. It's not a reverb that we traditionally use on the desk. We'd still have those effects and plates and reverbs running in. Uh, this room engine is really to tie down the whole mix uh, and it can really help, especially when you're a touring engineer going with the same act from a venue to a venue that doesn't sound as uh, similar to the last one. This can help you tie down your mix uh, in a new place. It's quite easy to transition from a left-right mix into a Lisa mix because you would still do 
everything that you're used to doing on the desk not much changes you still you still use every channel strip exactly the way you're used to using in left right the only thing that changes is you don't use the pan knob anymore you come into the elisa controller and you do your panning from here and you're doing panning in a new direction which is distance apart from the left and right we can of course very easily scale this show up if we needed to with surrounds and overheads and rares uh, the mix doesn't change uh, you can very easily adapt your elisa session into a 360 that can uh, really improve the immersive experience for the audience this is all the all the mix side of it but uh, since we're at the foh let's have a look at the elisa processors we have two processors here. We're really using only one. The second one's a standby. So we are running the outputs from the desk via MADI coming into the Elisa processor. So the Elisa processor does both in and out in both MADI and AVB. Today we're using AVB for the outputs going to the amps, which is quite easy with our Elacoustics amps because they all are AVB ready now. And the inputs from the desk are coming in via MADI. All of the transport from the Elisa controller goes uh, via network to the amps. The contractor for all the event equipment is uh, Session Pro. Session Pro is uh, a certified provider of Alacoustics as well. They have their own team here, so they're not just using our products, they're distributing our products as well. So we already have, of course, a good relation. So let's have a closer look at the stage and maybe some hidden details as well, because what you can't see from that perspective is the subwoofers. But what you already can see is, of course, the scene system. So we have, again, five hangs of Cairo 2. Um, each hang is consisting of nine Cairo 2 and uh, maybe if we are a bit closer you can already see that we have different pan flex settings because of the astronomical shape of the, of the venue here. So the upper three have 70, then we have three with 90 degrees and the lower ones have 110 degrees. And typically, for especially for uh, lease approaches, we are trying to get the subwoofer as close as possible to the scene system which we couldn't do here because of weight restrictions. So the load of the stage was not high enough because we have a, you know, that beautiful stage you can see here, and it's really beautiful. But unfortunately, it can't take all the load of the system. So we had to place the subwoofers down to the ground. Um, and what you can see here as well is the front frills. These front frills are spatial front frills. So any front frill speaker has its own dedicated and rendered mix which comes from the scene system. Typically, you would try to separate the front fills as much as possible so that the uh, visitors would hear just one mono source. What we're trying here is, or we have to take care about is, for the spatial front fills, so if you like to have a specialization, you need to have them closer together because you need to hear more sources. So the rule here is, the sources need to be closer together than the distance from the first listener to the um, source which we have here so that they hear at least two better three sources at the same time and then with a special spatial mix with a dedicated rendering um, we have the possibility to, to give them the the feeling that they hear it where it comes from we have two different outfills we have one small outfill which is placed at the downstage uh, edge um, that's an X8 as well, but with the, with the mono down mix. So we have all the signal at the same time here because we don't have any solutions to put more speakers on that side. Um, so this is to bring down the image for the people over here. And then we have another outfill here with some A10s to have a, let's say, or to be able to cover a bigger distance to the um, stage, especially in the corners. It looks like a small PA, but at the end, it's a, it's a bigger PA than it, it looks like. But the question is not, not how many speakers, the question is how it sounds and uh, what's in for you when you use it. And I think especially in that situation here, on that square, it's really worth to, you know, to take that um, effort. The outcome is uh, so much better and, and, and such a difference to a typical left-right scenario. So as I already mentioned that we have a spatial fill system and a spatial front fill system, of course, needs a lot of channels because all that different X8 need a, a distinct um, and separated um, mix, uh, and you would a lot of you would need a lot of amps. So what we did here is we used an LS716, a 16-channel amplifier, and uh, so we have been able to drive all that 
spatial fills you see here, including the outfills with just one amplifier, the 16 channel one. Um, for the Kawas and for the KS21, we are using LR12X and a standard LRAC 2 AVB, um, which is our standard touring rack. We are using a bit of monitoring as well, because as you can imagine, of course, there is some noise on stage, because here on stage you can see that the, <laughs> the main system is really um, not at the front of the stage, so it's more or less exactly above the orchestra, especially of the violins. So, of course, they will hear some noise, not just from the PA, from the, from the roof as well. So, what we need to do is, because you can imagine they don't have much direct noise, we need to add something for them that it sounds more natural. So, we are using monitor systems like this X8 you can see, or like the X8 here for the, for the uh, conductor. We are using that to give them the feeling that it's not just some random noise which comes from somewhere. We are using that additional monitors to give them a bit more information about what they're playing so that it feels more natural, like a natural reverb and not just uh, some reflections from a roof. Last time it was done, it was in, in stereo still. Of course, times are changing. The, we have better possibilities right now and of course there is the expectation of the people that this has to be one of the best presentations of this orchestra. By the way, this is free here. Everybody can come here without a ticket. So there is a pressure to the house to as well be with the newest and best possibilities that they can supply. And that's why this uh, decision was made to uh, go on an immersive sound system. You have the impression, wherever you sit, when you're sitting on the far right side, you still can localize the, the first violins on the left and here in that case the second violins that they are on the right. So there is a difference between these two. And uh, this would not be the case if you work with a stereophonic system. So due to that, you have a much more natural feeling because in an, when you're listening to an amplified orchestra, you would have pretty much the same impression. So Elisa is a huge step in that direction. <laughs>